Hey there, Alex from AirOps here, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about memory stores. So inside of your applications, you often want to retrieve information uh, that might be in PDFs or uh, spreadsheets or in your database. And memory stores make it easy for your LLM powered applications to retrieve that information at runtime and then use it to construct answers, generate content, and a whole host of other use cases. I'm gonna talk you through creating both a workflow and a chat assistant using an AirOps memory store. So the first thing I need to do is load in my documents. So to do this, I head over to memory stores. I'm gonna create a new one here. I'm gonna call it example just to show you guys. And then I'm presented with a blank memory store. There's nothing in it yet. I then click add document. I have three ways to add uh, documents into this memory store. The first is to upload a file. Um, I can do a PDF, a CSV, or a TXT file. If it's a CSV file, the formatting really matters. Please follow the instructions and check out the documentation for more information. You can also use a Google Drive, a uh, Google Sheet, um, and connect that and import it. And I can also run a SQL query on one of my connected databases, but we'll do a separate video on that. So once uh, I've created my memory store, I click add document. I'm gonna go over here, click my Google Drive folder, and then I'm gonna add my notes here. And it takes about five to 10 minutes to import a large file because we're doing things in the background to make it ready for use. Now I've already, I'm gonna delete this now, but I've already added one uh, here called AP Biology. And what we can do in the test store is add in a semantic search phrase or, or a, um, a uh, kind, of, kind of question format here. So I'm gonna type in, um, uh, boiling water, for example, and I'm going to hit search. And what is going to happen is it's going to return chunks of that document along with a percentage. Uh, how well does that um, uh, particular chunk of the PDF I uploaded uh, match the search term or the question that I'm asking here? Um, and so this isn't how you're going to use it. This is just a way to test what's in there and play around with it. Um, and we've converted that PDF into a series of these usable chunks that I can then work into a workflow. So let's go ahead and create the most basic application possible with this. So let's go ahead and create a chat assistant first. Um, I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this biobiology, biology bot. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add the memory store I just created to this chat assistant. So um, I'm gonna add this memory search feature. I'm gonna click configure. I'm gonna choose AP Biology as the memory store I want to use. This makes it available to the chat assistant. And I'm gonna say, please. So this is very important. The description here is how you are um, telling the chat assistant to use this tool that you're providing it, in this case, the memory store. So I'm gonna say, um, use this uh, whenever you are answering a question on biology. Okay, so this is basically a, a short description which tells the language model how to use this. So we now have our memory store attached. Um, and then for our core chat assistant, I'm gonna delete the default system prompt, which is how you tell uh, the chat assistant its personality and its objectives. And I'm gonna say, you are a, um, a, a biology teacher with a sense of humor. Um, please answer questions only using the attached AP biology tool. And so it knows the name of this. It knows that it has this tool on the left to use when answering questions. Um, and it's gonna now just use uh, that, hopefully when, when using that, we're gonna give it a test in a second. And then opening remarks like, hey, can I help you with your study today? today. And let's add a little, uh, let's add a little icon here. All right, that'll do. So we're gonna save that and then I'm gonna run a test. We pop open our chat modal and I'm gonna say, um, can you uh, tell me about vaporization of water? So we're gonna get a little waiting thing. It's gonna use the tool um, and it's gonna retrieve information from the memory store there and it's gonna use it to construct its response. So if you wanna create a chat assistant based on your docs, this is the basic framework. But what if you wanted to actually use this in a workflow? Well, you can do that too. So let's head back to our, I'm actually gonna publish my tool, um, biology bot here, let's save that. Let's publish it. It's gonna add it to my workspace now. Great, there we go. 
And now I'm gonna create a new app and this time I'm gonna do a workflow which is gonna be a question answer. Um, and you might use this if you wanna create an API or you wanna do content drafting, but it's, it's exactly the same principle. So I'm gonna add my question in here. Um, and this is gonna be required every single time I run this workflow. I'm then gonna have a memory store step in here. So I'm going to use my AP biology memory store. We actually include a default one as well, constitution, which is the US constitution. If you wanna play with it, that's a, a fun tip. I'm gonna say I want three results. And I'm going to just include my question as the query in here. So again, this isn't question answering yet, but it will return content that's semantically similar to my question. And hopefully there are words in there that are going to be semantically similar in, uh, in content contained in the memory store. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, but that's not gonna quite work because I'm gonna get a bunch of chunks of that PDF at this point. So let's go ahead and add an LLM step and say, um, uh, we'll get, we can use GPT 3.5 Turbo for this. I'm sure it will be fine. Um, uh, and I'm gonna say, you are a question answer uh, system that is designed to use the information provided to answer questions on AP biology. And then I'm gonna say, please answer the following, the user question, and we put it into um, parentheses just to um, really make sure that we, we can encapsulate that. Sometimes if you don't do that, it, it, it goes a little bit um, wonky or it can't quite determine the beginning and end of the question um, using only the following information provided by my AP biology notes. Sometimes context really helps in these situations. It just really can help it understand the role you want it to play. And then we're going to return um, uh, the output of step one, which is here. Step one's the, the retrieval step. And so you're gonna end up with this question and then a series of chunks. Um, uh, and I'm just gonna put this here. Um, and uh, the assistant will then uh, write a response based on this. And I'm gonna turn on streaming, which means the little uh, pieces of text get returned to the browser as they're generated by the model. So it's a much better end user experience. So save changes, I'm gonna call this um, biology Q&A workflow. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna run a test and I'm gonna say, um, let's see, does water expand when it freezes? I hope we all know the answer to this, but um, sometimes, and again, it's now constructing a response from here. Now you can actually obviously tune this further, but this is an incredibly powerful technique for a number of use cases. Um, obviously question answer, but also if you want to pull relevant products into content generation workflows, you want to make recommendations, you want to um, create classifiers that learn as they go. We're shortly gonna be adding the ability to have workflows right back to memory stores, which is a powerful way to kind of allow these um, these apps to learn as they continue to be used. But hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, just hit the need help button. We're here to help and we'll be adding more videos shortly. Thank you.